Once you've installed Studio One 5 and downloaded all of the included content, you can start a new song. In the start page, there are three different types of files that you can create. Song files, project files, and show files. Song files are your typical session project files. This is where you can record and edit audio, import audio, work with MIDI and virtual instruments, add effects inserts, and mix your music. Project files are mostly used for mastering, where you have multiple finished songs that you need to master as a project, like an album or an EP. New to Studio One 5 are show files. These are live performance projects that allow you to use Studio One as a tool for mixing a live performance, trigger backing tracks, and use amp sim plugins and other effects in live performance. For this course, I'll exclusively be using song files. Also in the start page, you can set up your audio device or audio interface here before creating a song or a project. So here I'm using my Mackie Big Knob Studio as my playback device, as well as my recording device. However, I'll talk more about setting up audio devices in the next video, and I'll show you a different location where you can access the audio setup after you've already created a song file. So I'll click New Song, and this will pull up the New Song dialog, where you can set various options for your song in advance. On the left are different styles. These are essentially different templates that you can work with. There's also an Interfaces tab, where you can choose templates for various different audio interfaces. These are particularly helpful if you're using Personas interfaces, like the Studio Live mixers. And then you can also create your own user templates. I'll just create an empty song and start from scratch. On the right, you can set your song title, so I'll just call this New Song 1. And then you can click here to select the location for that song file. By default in Mac OS, these are saved to Documents Studio One Songs. But if you want to pick a different location, like the desktop, for example, you can do that as well. Here you can set your sample rate and your bit resolution or your bit depth. I'll go with 48K and 24-bit just for now. You can also set your time base. Time base affects how various events in your song are synchronized. So if you're creating a project that's for video, you might want to use frames. But if you're creating a musical project, you'll almost always want to use bars. So audio events synchronize to musical rhythmic deviations, like bars, beats, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, etc. You can set your song length in advance if you want. I'll just keep this at five minutes. You can set the tempo in advance. I'll keep this at 120 BPM for now. You can also set the time signature or meter of your song in advance. So let's say, for example, I wanted this to be 6-8 time instead of 4-4 time. I could very easily do that in advance. You can also set the key signature of the song in advance if you like. This brings up a circle of fifths with the major keys on the outside and the minor keys on the inside. If you're not sure what key your song is in, just click in the center and it won't designate a specific key. But for me, I know that my song is going to be in A minor, so I'll select that. Stretch audio files to song tempo automatically stretches or compresses imported audio files to match the tempo of the song. I'll keep this on for now, but there are some situations where you don't want this option on, but you can turn this option off later if you'd like. Play Overlaps allows overlapping recordings and events to play back, even if one event is overlapping another. For now, I'll keep this off. One thing to remember is that all of these options here can be changed later, so don't worry if you chose the wrong thing here. So I'll just click OK, and the main arrangement window pops up. This is called the Song Page. This is where I can start recording my song, but I need to set up my audio device or my audio interface first, so I'll show you how to tackle this in the next video.